so what's going on youtube my name is mehul and welcome back to another video in which we'll be looking at my 10 predictions for 2020 in the web development world let's go number one i believe that this year will see a massive increase in es build and the toolkit it brings with itself like other tools like white and snowpack which use es build internally why because es build literally puts other tools like webpack to a shame when you benchmark them or speed test them it's not a two times it's not a five times it's not a ten times it's a hundred times faster than webpack now that's something to consider when both tools do the same job in fact i use snowpack on code damp playgrounds as well it's not a regular webpack because that's just too slow for booting up a playground but anyway, this is my first prediction, I believe, and I hope that more development ecosystem, at least in development, makes use of ES build because that speeds up your development time by a hundred times, literally. Number two, I believe that this is the year when concurrent mode is gonna land in the React. Now, concurrent mode is a highly polarized sort of thing where some people are extremely uh, happy for landing it and some people just think that it will break the web but this is gonna be the year I believe react team will land concurrent mode it has been there for so long it has been hyped for so long and it is sort of an experimental mode as well available right now but this is the year which should see stable release of react concurrent mode number three this platform which I came across the other day called codedam.com it is going to become one of the best learning platforms for web development in 2021 whether it's front end whether it's back end full stack databases all that stuff this is gonna be the best platform to get your hands dirty with video courses to get your hands dirty with practice projects creating playground snippets all that beautiful stuff linked with mentorship as well so if you want to get started links are in the description this part has been sponsored by you guys because well we run code down number four for me is going to be support for wasm and popularity now we have been hearing about wasm since 2017 but i believe this year it is going to be much more popular and it's going to get much more popular as well among projects recently wasm has uh, ported ffmpeg binary from the native binary to wasm which enables you to actually run ffmpeg in the browser itself but the point being wasm is going to be impactful for the web in the next three to five years and 2021 is gonna add huge amount of fuel to that growth number five typescript will keep on gaining popularity and you have to get on with it typescript is the obvious next step when you're learning javascript and you want to use javascript in you know serious stuff serious business then it is of no brainer to go ahead and use typescript because javascript at the end of the day has a very loose typing system which is probably not the best thing you want on a production server so yeah typescript has done a massive jump in the github use in the year 2020 and i only believe that this is going up in 2021 as well not so much popular with javascript so it will probably stay at number two in the github rankings but it is definitely going up spots <clears throat> in all sorts of rankings this year as well as in the coming years as well Number six for me is gonna be rise of libraries like React Query, UseSWR, and their similar equivalents in other frameworks and libraries. Why? Because these libraries make it so easy to cache network request, to revalidate network request, to you know just mutate the data which is present in the in the in the sort of network cache and not care at all about those stores and maintaining a central state and all that stuff most of the applications are built around you know just network calls and just caching them on the application layer and then you know reusing those same network calls calling them again and again really really simplifies your model of your application so i highly believe that libraries like react query and the mentioned i just mentioned use swr are gonna see a massive increase in use as developers become aware about them and uh, this is gonna be replaced by you know the standard fetch and use effect practices which we usually do when we're starting to learn react and this is a huge benefit both in terms of front-end developing and back-end development in terms of resources in terms of user experience and basically whatever you can think of this is actually the right step 
Number seven is gonna be a fall of Redux for me. Why? Because of number six. Well, let's face it, most applications or a bigger chunk of applications which uses Redux use it to maintain central state, right? So that is point number one to keep in mind. Point number two is out of that bigger chunk of applications, I don't have the exact figures, but I'm assuming a lot of applications use Redux to maintain network level state. That means you get something from the server, you store it in a Redux store that is used by multiple components, whether it's your header, whether it's your content, and uh, that allows you to, you know, not bug the server again and again. That is a use case which is solved already by number six, right? My React query, use SWR and similar equivalents. So if you have those in place, it not only just simplifies your logic a lot because now you do not have to see that data flow. It gives you out of the box benefits of caching revalidation, just like I mentioned in the last point. So definitely this is something which is going to be impact, going to put an impact to Redux. And uh, personally, I can say that because I have almost removed Redux from Codedam source code. Codedam used Redux, used to use Redux heavily back, let's say, four or five months ago. But now I have completely shifted to Apollo, uh, Apollo GraphQL client at the front end and Apollo server at the back end, which just eliminates the need of a central store of, of sorts where you have to see the data transactions happening. So this is my huge prediction for 2021 that Redux is gonna see a decline in growth. It's gonna see a deacceleration of the amount of downloads of the use because of number six, which I mentioned. So there's that. Number eight is gonna be a massive increase in websites using server-side generation and rendering frameworks like Next or Nuxt. Why? Because developers are also realizing, even companies are realizing that in order to gain speed, in order to have better performance, in order to have better SEO, in order to have better web vital scores, you need to generate as much content as you can on server and use minimal JavaScript on the front end. It's just better UX. It's not like rocket science. If you have less code to execute, you have much more performant web pages. So that is gonna see a huge jump. Actually, it's just gonna continue because 2020 has been, I guess, the year for next. But yeah, this is gonna continue even more in 2021. Number nine is as usual, we're gonna see a huge increase in serverless now because not just AWS and Lambdas and you know, the core technology, but the companies built on top of Lambdas also, like Wurzel, for example. Wurzel deploys your Next.js code and you know, all your serverless functions on Lambda. So that is a serverless technology. So these technologies, uh, and platforms will help you as developer to focus much more on the coding aspects even if you are building high traffic websites and focus less on the infrastructure which is pretty cool if you ask me so this is gonna be a huge developer experience boost in 2021 shifting of more things on the serverless side of more traffic oriented websites on the serverless side so you focus more on the code and business logic and less on the infrastructure and number 10, last but not the least, I sincerely believe that AI, GPT-3 and all that stuff is not gonna take over the web. Why? Because people still do not know what they want to build. You know, tools like GPT-3 and uh, all these AI stuff are gonna need exact representation of what you want. But most of the times when you're dealing with those boring clients, they just want revisions again and again. So yeah, I mean, humans are here to stay. I'm, you know, on a serious note, I sincerely believe that this although is the beginning of the end of easy front-end jobs, it is still the beginning of the end, but it is still a long way to go. I mean, that AI will just get better from this point, but trust me, you at least have five to seven to 10 years of, uh, you know, easy front-end jobs and gigs still with you so there's that you are more likely to be you know thrown out of shop by figma or you know all these all these automatic website building tools than a gpt3 representation where you can just write text and the code spits out so be careful of figma you know shopify wordpress and, and these stuff which people use instead of like ai and you know wondering and discussing about ai is taking over the code and web and that stuff 
so yeah so yeah guys that was my 10 predictions for 2021 what do you think are these right are these wrongs would you like to add something to the predictions or in general if you like the video please leave a comment below and let me know what you think that is all for this video don't forget to like and subscribe thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next one